You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Larry here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Seven Mountain of the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Rain Check. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All righty. We can discuss this further after our visit to the hospital. <clears throat> well, wrong voice. Speaking of which, we're nearly there. Rounding another corner, the hospital looms on the horizon, and I firmly shake my head, trying to dispel the growing discomfort. Hospitals have never been my favorite, not since childhood, and it's been a while now. Maybe things will be different. I can do this. We do this. It's hard to imagine it's been almost a decade since I was in a hospital. Now that I'm here, I would have imagined it'd be, a, it'd be more crowded, particularly with that du with what Dust had mentioned about increase in skeleton usage, but it's eerily empty. God, I'm so glad I've been healthy for all these years. This place gives me the creeps. I'll never get accustomed to the strong antiseptic odor that fills the hospital air. Theodore. Huh? The elevator's here. Javier sticks his head out from the elevator and glares at me. Yeah, you coming in or not? <sighs> oh, sorry. Javier darts out as soon as the elevator door slides open, making a swift lift down the corridor. I prepare to follow when Rue steps in front of me with a worried look. You good? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just not a fan of hospitals. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Let's hurry up and get out of here. Rue takes the lead and I follow, consciously avoiding any lingering glances into the open rooms. Eventually, we make a turn and spot Javier waiting impatiently outside a room down the hallway. About time. He knocks on the door and lets himself in as we approach. Rue enters, leaving me standing in the corridor, second-guessing my decision to go inside. Maybe waiting in the car would have been a better choice. The door opens again, with, Rue he with Rue's head peeking out. There's a moment of hesitation as he beckons me in. Fuck it. Oh, okay. Ah, he looks a lot better. Another one?! My attention is immediately drawn to the terrified boar in the bed, his eyes locking onto mine. Rue and Javier stand on either side of him. I avert my gaze and quickly find a place to sit. Who are you people? Please don't hurt me! Could you stop yelling and listen? We're not here to hurt you. We just have some questions. Rue, you say something. This guy looks more afraid of you than me. Iridescent power plant. Sound familiar? We found you unconscious there. Well, not me, but him. The wolf turns towards me and gestures in my direction. I manage to muster an awkward nod in response to the anxious man's fearful gaze. Uh, hi. You guys saved me? Be a deeper voice for him. Yes, we did. Now, what ha- The boar suddenly buries his face into a pillow and begins to sob uncontrollably. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you so much! Uh... Wah! Wah! <laughs> I mean, he did almost die. Please, it's fine. Meow! <laughs> His voice is so muffled, I'm not sure what he's even saying. Bzzz. Did he just blow his nose into the pillow? Uh, maybe he just needs a minute? The boar wipes his face dry and attempts to sit up on the bed. Ow, ow, ow! Don't move, you need rest. Huh, something's off. Wasn't he severely beaten? How does he have this much mobility? Now, why don't we get formalities out of the way? How should we address you? Monty, with an eye. Well, Monty, with an eye, would you like to explain what happened to you? Who attacked you? Um... I don't know. Do you remember why you were at the power plant? Um... I don't know. It's all kind of a blurry, you know? Blurry and dizzy. There's a brief pause, but when no one speaks, I rise from my seat and approach the others, hoping to help. I think he knows who he is. Do you know who you are? Of course! I'm Monty! With an eye. Exactly! With an eye! So you remember your past, right? 
Oh, uh, I think so. My head hurts. What's the last thing you remember? <laughs> I, um... Uh, oh, um, actually, let me go back and see if there's a... What before the... What about before the incident? Do you remember anything about that? Of course, I went to work yesterday. Uh, and what happened after work? Oh, I don't remember. It's also hazy. Hmm, looks like he's hiding something. I, um... Oh, I, I kind of remember being there with someone, maybe. Huh. Alright, let's try... The... What happened to your clothes? The boar inspects himself before staring blankly back at me. Hey, these aren't my clothes! What happened to my clothes? Knowing this hospital, they like to give clothes from the thrift store next door to patients, depending on the situation, of course. I mean, it looks good on him. It looks like a lumberjack. That's different. Usually hospitals just give gowns to patients, right? The wolf points to a torn shirt in the corner of the room. That's his. My clothes! Oops! Yeah, I was in that big old gown thingy, and then they handed me these clothes, you know? I guess I wasn't supposed to change yet, but, uh, oops. But, how can you just forget that? So, you're able to remember. Can you recall what you were doing before the power plant? I, um... Oh, um, I kind of remember being there with someone. Maybe? Huh. Was I? You think? Where? With who? Oh, well, I remember now. Um, you guys won't, like, hurt me, right? We wouldn't have waited until now to hurt you. Two days ago, when I was leaving for work, I was, um, attacked. Monty's voice is soft and quivering as he speaks, his demeanor clearly disturbed. Go on. I was in a parking lot when someone came up to me crying for help. Honestly, I, I don't know if they were, like, crying for help or crying from pain. Then, like, I don't know where they whipped out this gun thingy at me. Crazy, right? Holy shit. That's what I said, too. I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of floored it. His voice fades, eyes growing dull and glazed. I think I ran him over. Is that all? Were they a short, mangy-looking cat? They were tall, kind of skinny. Maybe a lion? It was dark, but their paws were these bandage thingies when they showed the gun. Where do you work? Where do you work, Monty? Uh, at a bank, but I'm just a janitor. This guy's a jacked-ass janitor, Jesus. Hmm, must be some giant mops he has to push there. Hey, um, you guys aren't thinking of calling the police on me, are you? We won't if you continue your recount. <laughs> okay, um, when I got home, I got two texts. I suddenly get chills as I hear the words come from Monty. So one message was all like, head to the power plant tomorrow night, I will ring up the cops on you. And if I blabbed anyone, they said they'd kill me, man. The other text was a photo of me I'm turning the lion into a pancake. <laughs> Interesting. Do you mind if we take a look at that photo on your phone? It's gone. I couldn't find it when I woke up, including my wallet, too. Shit, of course. This is literally hap This is literally what happened to me. It's definitely similar. So what happened after that? He went to the power plant and got attacked. Yeah, kind of cringe now that I think about it. Uh, I might have taken a wrong turn or something. I think I got there when the sun was just coming up. I can see the boar's arm, arms start to shake. There was a snow leopard dude with a cool black mask thing. He said hi and all, and then we went inside. Are they the leader? They started chatting about stuff, but like, I had no clue what he was on about. But he was like, join Blackout or else, and I'm pretty sure that meant killing me. Isn't that what Rue and Javier were talking about? At first I was like, sure, but then they told me I had to murder someone. Definitely wasn't going to do that, so I ran. The boar buries his face back into the pillow, his sobs muffled by the fabric. And I'm guessing this is when he changed his mind and got attacked. Sounds like it. Whoa! How evil do you have to be to hurt this guy? He's adorable. He's like a giant teddy bear. Teddy boar. He's a teddy boar. It was horrible! I don't ever want to experience something like that again! There, there, you're safe now. Honestly, I'm surprised you're holding up so well. It looked like you took a beating. You saw that? That's so embarrassing. Monty slowly moves his paw and winces. I don't know, my digits kind of hurt, so I'm just trying not to wiggle them too much. Well, the rest ain't too shabby, but I got this zappy mark on my chest. Doc mentioned something about me getting a shock or whatever. Rue and I exchange glances. I see. And no broken bones? 
Doc said something about broken ribs or whatever, but hey, I've had tougher tumbles before. This ain't much. Oh, man, like, like that one time I was fishing? Well, I got all tangled up and whoosh, the sea kind of dragged me. That was like way wilder. Did I mention I can't swim? What? Or, oh, that time I got tried camping. I got all turned around, was out there for like weeks before folks found me. L lesson learned, always pack a compass. Um. Oh, or this time I almost, uh. <clears throat> Right. Seriously, it's kind of wild. Not sure I'm still alive. You're telling us. You know, I kind of thought I was a goner. Everything went all black and white back at the power plant, you know? I have a heart condition. Car door empathy. You mean cardiomyopathy? Yeah, that's the one. Car door empathy. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Rue points to the monitor next to Monty's bed. His heart rate looks pretty small, although I'm not sure about... Well, not sure what abnormal would be. No wonder ECG looks off. Truly a miracle. The door slides open and a slender meerkat holding a clipboard walks in. But she comes to a halt upon seeing us. I notice you have guests. I can come back later and, and discuss your blood work results. No need. I think we're just about done here. Javier, your card. The fox searches through his coat and then neatly sets a business card down on the bedside table. Name's Rue. Call if you remember anything. Get some rest. Monty nods in acknowledgement, fear fl still flickering in his eyes. He reminds me of myself. As we leave the hospital, there's a heavy silence as I try to process the boar's recount. It doesn't help that I keep noticing, ha noticing Javier sneaking peeks at me through the rear view as he drives. Um, you know, you know, about what Monty said, he mentioned blackout and also described a really similar situation to what happened to me. The fox chuckles, and I catch a, catch a smirk through the mirror. Hmm. Suddenly, you're ten times more important. It's like waking up early today paid off, all thanks to Theodore, of course. Yeah, yeah, three cheers for the tiger, I guess. Thank you, Oh. Oh, that guy. In any case, it looks like we have some work cut out for us. We'll need to figure out how to proceed with tonight's investigation. We might be able to kill two birds with one stone. Oh, but that means we'll need to prepare for another stakeout. My shoulder is still sore. Speaking of which, Theodore, how's your leg? Uh, bruised, but I'm managing. Go back and rest until tonight. You've had quite a day already. We'll pick you up later. Thank God, I can finally rest. Sure thing. I let out a sigh and look out the window. The rain stopped, but those clouds still kind of look moody. Man, I guess I'm deep in this mess now. wonder what all this means. We're here. Uh, we're here. Thanks, guys. Wait, before you go, you said you wanted to be more useful, right? Yeah. Javier turns around from his seat and hands me a small device similar to the one I used before. This is for me? And here I... Th and here I thought you didn't trust him. What are you giving him a segmenter for? Hmm. I just don't want him to slow us down. He eyes Rue defeatedly before returning his gaze to me. Anyway, like Rue said, it's a segmenter. It's not exactly the one you used earlier, but they all perform similar tasks. You ever used one of these before? For, like, for science class or something? No, never. I don't think my school had funding for this kind of stuff. <sighs> okay, well, if you want to be useful, you should learn how to use this. Let me park first, and I'll give you a demonstration inside. Alright, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two Gold Tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our non-safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye